Hello, everybody. My name is Roberto Martinez, aka Money Boy Three Nine Two. Thank you for watching today's podcast. Uh, you know, I haven't done one of these in a long time, and honestly, I miss it. That's why I'm here today. Um, but the biggest thing is, I want to say thank you all for the support. If you guys haven't heard already, I think it was about a month ago now. At this point, I walked and got my degree. It's honestly a, a blessing. You know, you don't realize just how important that moment is when you're walking down the aisle to get your bachelor's degree, not down the aisle, but up to the stage, right? And you're walking and you start to realize just how real that moment is. You know, you don't really realize it and, until it really happens. And, you know, I didn't realize it, man. I had the chills. I literally was getting the chills. And then I started to realize, you know what? All that hard work paid off. And uh, that is something that I know many people wish... They could say they have done, but I've done it and it's a blessing. It really is. And I'm so glad to have been able to accomplish them goals, knowing what most people thought of me when I was growing up. So that's huge. That's massive. I, I'm learning every day. It, you know, even after, even though I'm done school, I'm still learning every day. I'm learning about life. I'm learning about the process. And, you know, sometimes things don't go the way you really want it to. And the biggest thing is you continue pushing ahead and you find solutions, you find common ground and you work hard at making sure that you accomplish your goals. Look, I'm not a perfect individual at all. I make mistakes every single day, but the biggest thing and what makes me and sets me apart from everybody else is I work the hardest I can every single day to perfect my craft. It doesn't matter what it is. I work hard every single day to make sure that whatever I am currently focused on at the moment, you know, I make a mistake I think about that mistake until I can come back and correct it until the next opportunity, you know? Um, and, and I continue pushing and grinding towards that, that objective. Look, I will never give up. There is always a fight inside of my body and I'm going to continue fighting every single day. Um, it, it's a blessing that I'm in the positions that I am in today. You know, I don't know what the future will hold. Obviously I've said in the past, I really want to do motorsports, but you know, if the right opportunity opens up in the position that I really want to focus on, you know, I'm not going to say no. It comes down to the point of at this moment where you got to be realistic with yourself. I don't know where I would be in four or five years. You know, I don't really know. I, what I do know is I'm going to continue pushing hard every single day to continue growing because I don't settle. It doesn't matter what anybody says. I will never settle. I will never settle at one job. I'm not going to settle. I'm going to continue pushing. I'm going to continue pushing ahead and continue pushing to go farther and farther. I'm not going to settle for one thing. I want to become very successful. I want to be able to do as many things as I can in life. So when I'm done with this earth and when I'm done with this life, I can say I've done every possible thing that I could ever wanted to do. And that is the goal and that is the objective there. Um, next thing up is, you know, there's been a lot of talk about recently within the tech community and, you know, unfortunately a lot of cable providers really have been shutting down their TV networks, their traditional, you know, your traditional cable TV providers are really shutting it down. And, you know, realistically, I mean, I think that's the best, best situation, honestly, because at this point in time where we are with technology and what it continued to advancing really you can run your TV service all through servers and websites. You really, through an app, you don't really need a traditional style cable box anymore. Look at YouTube TV. It's the only cable service that's really growing at the moment. Everybody else is losing subscribers. And guess what sets them apart from the regular cable providers? It's their ability to where you can just stream wherever the hell you are. You know, I can watch 4K TV online, literally on my TV in perfect picture quality. And it's amazing quality too. Look, it's not something that you can really get with a traditional cable box because you know there's no, there's only so much bandwidth cable providers can provide to cable TV, and honestly, it limits the ability of their internet. Really, it does because then they have to cut that bandwidth and dedicate it to just TV. Imagine if every single cable provider can say, you know what, I'm cutting out cable. Let's provide this bandwidth fully to just providing internet. Because let's be realistic, most home phones these days are not really home phones. They're literally just phone numbers that are ran over the internet. Literally, it's a voice over IP that some the cable providers do. Comcast does it. A lot of them are starting to do it, where all their telephone services just run right over the internet. So there's not really bandwidth required to really run them. They just run off your basic internet. 
So, I mean, I think that's where you're going to start seeing cable head at, the, head at this point. I don't think Comcast would give up on cable to the traditional cable box yet. I think with the much money I have spent investing into the X1 platform and the fact that they're getting other cable companies around the world to use it, I don't think Comcast will give up on it just yet. But I'm telling you, the future is not the traditional cable service. The future is going to be TV antenna, believe it or not, and also your your like your internet streaming. So it'd be like a live TV, but over an app. I think that's where you're going to start seeing headed. And honestly, that is the best case scenario. If you want more reliable internet and faster speeds, that's how you're going to get it. It is through just full stream everything. And it's very really possible. And it wouldn't shock me as we continue advancing, especially with Comcast making the investment they're making, that eventually... Data cats everywhere will be eliminated because it's so stupid to have a data cat when you require people to stream content. Like all these other providers are doing this, are eliminating their keeper cable service. I believe they don't even count the data for live streaming to TV services. So, like, I know Xfinity for a fact. If they use like their stream app on your TV, if you don't want a cable box, they don't even count that towards their usage, if I'm not mistaken. It's literally just counted as if you were just watching regular TV, if I'm not mistaken. There's a way for them to do it. I'm not, can't confirm or deny that, but I definitely do know certain things that do not count against you when it call it, when it's your TV. So like Netflix and stuff, yes, they're going to count against your data usage. But luckily for me, it really doesn't matter because Comcast don't really have a data cap in my town and in, in my region, which is one of the only regions currently at Comcast that don't have it, which is the Philadelphia region. Really, it's the only region that really doesn't have the data caps yet. And I'm blessed they haven't put it on because, honestly, I go through three, four terabytes a month. So, so yes, it's, it's, it, 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 that's a lot of terabytes. And just to think about I have to pay like 50 bucks a month extra to have unlimited data just makes me not want it. So, yes, I do go through a lot of data. And, honestly, it's it's a big part of me really i mean i stream everything everything is streamed if i'm not streaming twitch or if i'm not watching youtube i ain't using the internet so it's it's majorly important that we continue going down the path we are going and advancing in our technology world look i love tech man i really do and i've been looking at building a server because i have my actually regular gaming pc but I just haven't built a server yet. I have an old P desktop PC I could use as a server, but really it struggles to host anything server-wise. I tried to make a Minecraft server with it, and literally the jitter was so bad I couldn't use it. So, so yeah, I definitely need to build one. I really want to build a PC, but I'm, I'm debating. I literally just upgraded my PC like December, and there is now a new platform out since I upgraded. So the question is, do I want to move from the from the AM4 platform to AM5 platform and use my old AM4 platform parts and put it into the server? I'm thinking about that because really I do have a really good CPU, which is the Ryzen 5800X. Uh, it's eight core, eight core, sixteen threads. Really good CPU. The only knock I have on it, it is a freaking heat monster, dude. It's like a toaster. Like I, I if you go to my room, right? And if you have it where my PC is actually running and actually doing something intense, dude, you come up to just my desk area of my room, it's literally a freaking heat box. <laughs> so it's like, holy shit. And you walk away to just next to my bed, fucking ice cold. But as soon as you walk towards my desk, freaking heat monster. It literally pu puts off so much heat. I walked up to my desk one day, I'm like, holy shit, is it hot? And it was literally just my desk. I walked away from it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes, that's my biggest negative with just the 5000 series just in general. I, you know, it was a mistake on AMD's part. But, you know, they're just heat monsters. They're extremely hard to really cool unless you really have some monster cooling. And my mistake was I bought a, such a small case. And I have a weird awkward case that wasn't necessarily designed for what I'm trying to use it for. Which, it's my fault. But also... You know, it shouldn't be that much heat. <laughs> so I, I have a great case in my opinion. I really do like the design of the case. It's like an Asus case. So, you know, but 
I'm still thinking about it. Obviously, the Ryzen 7000 series are really good CPUs. But at the same time, I was comparing to what I could upgrade to, which is like the Ryzen 7... 790... The 7900X. And honestly, it was like a 10 FPS gain over what I currently have in like one of the major games I usually play a lot. So it's always a debate, right? Is it really worth the... $500 it would be to buy the motherboard, uh, the CPU, and then you have to get a RAM, which probably going to run you a 32 gigabyte stick is probably going to run you probably about like a hundred, 120 bucks. So you really got to debate that. Cause I currently have 32 gigabytes in this current PC and I would never go lower. I won't downgrade from that. And there's also other things that really make me not really want to go towards AM5 right now, which obviously if you guys don't know, DDR5 is a new type of RAM. And really, there's been some issues with it with stay, stability-wise, especially on the AM5 platform. It's a brand new platform, and I really, I'm not a type of person that jumps on it right away. I usually let the platform develop for at least a year before I do. So I don't know. I may just buy parts and build a regular server, for like a five, a, like a 50, 5700G or something like that from the AM4 platform, and just use that. Um, it'd be better, and it'd be more reliable instead of me trying to upgrade a PC and use the old parts. Like, I currently really like my PC, so I probably won't do that at the moment. I don't really see a need for the gains, really. The the FPS gains are not really there for me. I know some people, with their games they play, they probably have a massive difference, but like a 10, 15, 10 FPS difference. So it's not a big difference there. I right, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. See you guys later. Goodbye for now.